When I was first asked if I would do this, I thought I may not be the most, um, the best choice because unlike a lot of people who are here today, academically, I did have uh, my challenges in law school. But I probably, um, so what I always say about my law school career is, is that the good news is I rose significantly in class rank over the three years I was here. The bad news is I started pretty near the bottom. Um, and when you always get up to make a speech, I have to remember one time when I had a lawyer in front of me for a one-day jury trial, and he was late to talk a lot. And so we had this one-day jury trial, and at the end of the, uh, we're in chambers going over the instructions, and he says, Judge, how much time do I have for the closing argument? And I said, Richard, you will have 20 minutes. He said, looked at me concerned, he goes, Judge, that's not enough time. I said, Richard, it's a one-day jury trial. What, how much time do you think you should have? He goes, I think I need an hour. I said, Richard, the greatest speech in the American uh, continent, the American political experience, was Abraham Lincoln's Gettysburg Address. It took about two and a half minutes. I realize that you're not Abraham Lincoln, but I'm giving you 10 times as long. I think that would be, I think that would be sufficient. And he actually did 20 minutes and won the case. So, so that's what happened there. I am going to take my own advice, and hopefully I'll be done in a few minutes. When I reflect back on my law school career before I came up here, I don't remember the building. I don't remember um, how, uh, being in this nice facility. What I remember are the people who I interact with in my law school class and some of the faculty members we had, both good and bad, in the sense of good experiences and bad experiences. I remember, for example, um, one time when Andrew Cohen asked me to play tennis, and I thought I knew how to play tennis until I went on the court with Andrew, and his first serve I never saw. <laughs> I heard it banging against the, banging against the, the fence, and he's, he's moving over, and he's looking at me, and I'm thinking, was that a serve or what? I remember uh, one Christmas, my first year, when uh, Byron Wallace was kind enough to join myself and my then wife Susan in our very small apartment uh, at, off of Murray Hill. Um, I remember uh, John Mulligan, who I worked with after uh, by our second year of law school. He and I both worked at the Murray firm. And there was a man, and, and I, I, there was a male student um, named John, and I'm trying to think of his last name, who had a dog, and the dog went through graduation ceremony with us. Does anybody remember who I'm talking about? His, he was from Philadelphia. His first name was John, I think. Anyway, one time I was looking over an exam that, and that um, for contracts, I was looking at an old exam that uh, uh, Professor Austin had uh, given. And I started laughing because they had humorous in it. And John looked at me and he said, Jim, never do that. I, I said, what? He said, never laugh. I said, never laugh, John? He goes, never laugh. I said, why? He says, that's when they get you. When you're laughing, they get you. <laughs> so, um, and I remember some of the professors, uh, Professor Jacoby, uh, butchering the first day of, of butchering students uh, because we had failed to read the assignment and several students dropped out after that week. <laughs> I remember uh, Joe Howe gave a 23, gave a, a hearsay exam and evidence, or gave an evidence exam, had 23 um, exceptions to the hearsay rule in the last problem. And Dave Duff, who's a very good student, very good classmate of ours, very graduate order of the coif, uh, had, he always looked at his exams afterwards, I never did. And he went over, and I had gone out at the 17th exception, there was apparently six more after that, that were all valid. And Joe Howe had written on the uh, exam, Mr. Duff, so close yet so far. <laughs> <laughs> or, one time, Art Austin, at the, at, he gave a midterm in contracts, and I knew nothing about contracts in the midterm. And so I got the Calamari, Calamari book on contracts and read it six times in one semester. When I went up to get my grade, 
Professor Austin saw me and he said, uh, can I speak to you a minute, Mr. Kimmler? And I thought, this is not going to be good news. This is not going to be good news. And I said, well, what can I do for you? And he said, you know, I consider you one of my success, uh, success uh, stories this semester. And I said, I thought, well, that's interesting. I said, why would that be? He said, Mr. Kimmler, at the halfway mark, you knew nothing about contracts, nothing. And yet you stuck with me, you took notes, you came to class every day, and you did very well in the exam. And I thought to myself, well, I could tell him this because I read Calamari six times, but I may have to see him again. So I said, thank you, and got out of there. <laughs> so this is what I want to leave you with. Um, I have been given the opportunity to help the people of Ohio do justice. And I have seen juries do justice. I'm not going to sit here and tell you that juries never make mistakes, because any institution born of humans will make a mistake. But I will tell you that I think juries most generally get it right. And they don't do this because we give them a lot of money. And they don't do this because they get prestige. They do this because they know it's the right thing to do. Now, where lawyers come in is trial lawyers take it upon themselves to speak for those who, at that moment in time, cannot speak for themselves. Because I don't care how smart you are. I don't care how much you think you know. When you're sitting as a litigant in a jury trial, you are scared, you are nervous, you're worried, and sometimes the only person in that courtroom who will stand up with you is your trial attorney. Not your family, sometimes not your friends, but one attorney perhaps, two at the most probably, trying to get, do the best they can for, to advocate for you. That is a occupation that is worthy of respect. And that is the opportunity I have had to see those lawyers at work. And without this law school, I would not have had that opportunity. So I thank this law school for that. I thank the faculty who educated me as much as sometimes I didn't like it. And I thank the classmates who made my experience in law school tolerable. When I look back at law school, when I look back at law school, the negative experiences I had were perhaps in class. I have no bad memories of interacting with my fellow students, and I have a lot of good ones. Thank you very much.